How's it going guys, I'm Josh. We're in New York's financial district, or FIDI, and I am partnering with Canon using their EOS M50, very small mirrorless camera, to show you a bunch of different ways to photograph an urban center. We're gonna start the day with architecture photography. Now I feel there are two types of architecture shots. There's traditional, and that's when you capture the entire building, that's what you'd see in a real estate catalog. And then there's the more abstract. And for this, you're only gonna capture a part of the building. You can do more creative risks. And if you do it right, people might not even know you're photographing a building. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. A couple of tips. First, always look up. There's so much above your head that you'll miss if you're not looking up. Second, look for interesting patterns and obstacle illusions in architecture because there are a ton. Once you find a building you like, move around a little bit to see how the perspective changes and see if you can align it with one or two of the buildings. Some of my favorite photos are when you have just three buildings that are perfectly in line. Use the rule of thirds to align them too, it looks great. Third thing, punch in. So rather than having the wide shot of the entire building, zoom in a bunch on just one interesting component of the building. It gives it a way more abstract feel to the photo and it's way more disorienting when you can't see the sky. Fourth thing, tilt the camera. So traditional architecture shots love the perfectly level ground, perfectly upright buildings, but with abstract shots, just tilt the whole thing 45 degrees. Give it a whole new look. What I like to do sometimes is find a curved line and I tilt the camera so that becomes perfectly horizontal and now all of the normally vertical lines become crooked and you have a really neat abstract shot. We're now gonna do a little bit of interior architecture photography. We're gonna do so inside the Oculus. Now this is a beautiful building, but it's packed, and I have a little secret for avoiding that. The secret here is this 10-stop neutral density filter. Now with this, I can use a very slow shutter speed, and now all these people around here milling about will be blurred out of the shot, giving it a great empty feel. I'll take one photo with it, and now I'm gonna take it off and take another photo, and you can compare the two. It's crazy how much better it looks. One thing that's cool about this shot is that some people are gonna be moving while others are staying still. So you have this nice ghostly effect with some people that looks really awesome. Another phenomenal subject to shoot in the city is trash. Go out shooting the day before garbage day and you're just gonna find an abundance of trash. So there are a couple different things I like to do when I'm shooting trash. So first, you can do some beautiful still lights by getting really close up. There's lots of interesting colors and textures and patterns you'll find in trash. You can also get some good action shots of people taking out the trash, as well as the can collectors coming around to pick it up. And finally, you can use trash as a framing element by finding little holes in it for people to walk through. These black trash bags are also beautiful reflectors of light, so I love that. Now I'm gonna frame this up between the fire hydrant and this, and I'm gonna set my central focus point right in the open space that people are walking through. I'm gonna set my drive mode to high speed continuous. Thanks to the EOS M50's really fast dual pixel autofocus, it'll quickly focus on the subject, and now we just have to wait for the right person to come through. I love trash. We're now gonna do a little bit of street photography out here. Now, Fada is great because there are so many people coming from work in beautiful suits, which always make for great photos. A big part of street photography is being always ready. So when our scene got interrupted by firefighters, I stopped everything and just started shooting them. That's how you're gonna get some of your best photos. Another reason to look up, random painter in that window. You're gonna use all of these windows for some nice balance in the shot and wait until he paints the frame of the window. And he's gone, just like that. Next off, we're gonna photograph some steam in the city. Now, steam is always popping up in random places and it makes for really nice, eerie photos. I like to have a person walking through, typically. Now, this is gonna take a lot of images because you have to have the right steam amount in the right place with the right person. It's a lot of alignment. So, in a spot like this, I might take 100, 150 photos just to get a couple that I like. So, shoot excessively and you'll walk away with a few good ones. That's the beauty of digital. Best spot to be for sunset is undoubtedly rooftops. Now, the best way to find a good roof, if you don't know of any, is either hotels or rooftop bars. So when I first get up to a roof, I like to scout it out looking all the way around, and I notice one, all the buildings around me, and thinking what's the most interesting, what's catching light nicely, and then two, I look down, 
and I looked for interesting views of the road, interesting reflections off of the building. There's all sorts of great potential. So really just do a full on scouting mode before you start shooting. I really like this curve right here. So I'm gonna set my camera up on a tripod. So I'm gonna try and do some long exposures of the cars. And then using Canon's Camera Connect app, I'm gonna be able to remote control with my phone, which is really great because as you can see, tiny bit dangerous, which is why I don't wanna minimize the amount that I touch this camera. Another great technique is literally just throwing your camera over the edge. With a wide angle, it's gonna look beautiful and dramatic and maybe even vertigo inducing, which is great for a rooftop photo. Another fun thing to do is what I call the long exposure zoom out effect. You zoom out while you're taking the photo, which causes all the lights to make a really cool popping effect. This will require a lot of experimentation, but basic guideline, I like to do a six second shutter speed and I'll leave the camera taking the photo for the first three or four seconds still, just so it can capture everything and freeze it. And then in the last two or three seconds, I'll zoom out so you get the nice light effect. Play around with it, you'll get some very cool shots. We're on another roof now because can't get enough of these things and this view is truly something else. The more I shoot roofs, the more I feel like this just isn't enough. If only there was some way to go higher. You know what? I think an open door helicopter will do. A couple tips for taking an open door helicopter ride. First, not a bad move to have a wide angle lens because you can capture these vast sweeping views that look phenomenal. Second, I would use manual mode just because the lighting is gonna be consistent for most of your helicopter ride. And there's a lot of open sky which can actually throw off your camera's internal light meter. So just to make sure you're never over or underexposed, control everything yourself. Third, don't only take photos of the famous buildings and Statue of Liberty. Some of the most average things will be the most beautiful. Because New York is gridded, there are gonna be these long leading lines to your shot of roads that go forever. So definitely try and capture those. Also, don't be afraid to dangle those legs. Capture that classic influencer-y photo. Can't avoid that shot. So beautiful. That open door helicopter ride was a marvelous experience. And I think I got some excellent photos with the EOS M50, though it is hard to take a bad photo one year, a thousand feet in the air. Anyway, huge thank you to Canon for partnering with me on this project. It's been a blast. Huge thank you to you guys for watching this video. And that is all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you eventually. Yeah,